Hey everyone, welcome to lesson five about terrestrial ecosystems. It's going to be just like lesson four where you had to write your own notes about the marine ecosystem, but now you get to do it about land. Don't worry, I am purposely giving you extra time to complete these projects. So I'm assigning them on Saturday and Monday, and you're gonna have no new assignments until next Thursday. So these two assignments are gonna be due on Thursday, so that gives you some extra time to do these projects because it does take a little bit longer than a 10 question quiz would. So if you're writing in your notebook, it's gonna be on page 68. Your title is Terrestrial Ecosystems. Your essential question on the top on the left and above the blue line, what kind of relationships exist in terrestrial ecosystems? So just like your last project, you're gonna make your own food web of terrestrial, terrestrial means land, organisms, that show all the possible relationships from lessons one, two, and three. If you need to go back and look at lessons one, two, and three, please do so. I noticed on some of your quizzes, you got 20s and 30s, which tells me you didn't watch the video. Unlike marine organisms, you need to pick a biome. So you cannot have a cactus being eaten by a three-toed sloth. One lives in the desert, the other lives in a rainforest. So pick your favorite and make sure all of your animals and plants come from that ecosystem. Likewise, try to make sure all of your organisms are in the same general continent. So for example, I'm gonna give you two grassland animals that live in two different places. So a pronghorn antelope is native to the United States grasslands, but a lion is native to African grasslands. Yes, I know they're both grasslands, but one lives in the US and one lives in Africa. They will never actually see each other, so that's not a predator and prey of a grassland ecosystem. Try to stay away from freshwater organisms. Stay away from things like crocodiles and ducks and stuff like that. We are gonna do some freshwater ecosystems also, so don't use up those organisms now because you're gonna need them later. Your assignment is the same as last time. You're going to find two of each of the following. Producers, decomposers, herbivores, carnivores, primary consumers, secondary consumers, parasites and hosts, examples of mutualism, and examples of competition for both biotic and abiotic resources. Some resources that you could use to help look up your organisms include the Smithsonian National Zoo in Washington, D.C., the San Diego Zoo in California, and the Fort Worth Zoo here in Texas. All right, so I've taken you here to the Smithsonian National Zoo website. You'll wanna go here where the tab says animals. The easiest thing is just to pick animals A through Z. And it has nice little pictures of all the animals and their names. And you can click on one. You'll see some pictures of it and it'll tell you a whole bunch of information about that animal probably more than you even wanted to know. Cause see, look, it's like still going. Look at it, it's still going. The other zoo I told you to look at is the San Diego Zoo. And you would click here where it says animals and plants. They also have some live cams if you wanna check that out. And so it has them listed based on where they're located in the zoo. But a nice feature is you can pick one area of the world, like say Africa, and it'll have all the ones that are in rocky ecosystems in Africa. So it narrows down some of your choices so that you can pick some that would be actually in the same ecosystem in the same part of the world. Another good zoo website is the Fort Worth Zoo. This one you have to click, go to where it says plan a visit and it says animals and exhibits. That'll take you to a list of animals and they have it split up by whether they're birds, mammals, fish, or reptiles. And so if you click on one of the lists, it'll give you pictures of all the different animals that they have at the Fort Worth Zoo that you can click on and it'll give you more information. So that concludes your project, lesson five, about terrestrial ecosystems. Remember, you can't use the same animal twice also remember your animals need to actually interact with each other. So don't pick something from South America 
and say that it's going to interact with something from Africa. There's a whole ocean in between there. They're not going to actually see each other. Also make sure you're staying in a biome. So pick one biome and go with animals and plants from that one biome. Make sure you go to Google Classroom and fill out your 10 questions. As always, stay safe, do your work, and I'll see you next week. By the way, my cat is here. And he approves this message. <laughs>